Yeah. Hey guys, with G and the Bell, part two. Let me finish, finish with uh, uh, Rhonda before we were interrupted by these animals that come in here just to see you. I Not stretched me. them for you. I oh. handle your light work when yeah. uh, you didn't want to get out of your chair. Well, I, I've got a book and everybody claims, I, I'm in her corner when she fights, uh, everybody claims to be a teacher of hers. Well, her main teacher was her mother, who was a 1984 world judo champion. Anna Marie uh, is her name. Yeah, I did a nice interview with her last month. Oh, and, right she's, after one. and she's in my new book. And uh, a great, great athlete in her own right. And she comes here and teaches the class once in a while. Uh, so they say, uh, Jean, I understand you teach her. And I says, I don't teach her like everybody else. I have three words that I say. Only three. And she learned from them. Because she's had nine matches, nine pre amateurs, six pros, all with a arm bar. So my instruction for her, three words, break a arm. <laughs> She's done it <laughs> over and over again. Over About a minute and over each, again. usually. She's got other techniques that she does, but she tries to make Uncle Gene happy because I get fitter <laughs> impression if they don't do what I say. And, and you've also, I'm assuming, worked when they were younger with guys like Carl Parisian and Manny Gambirian here at, at Go Kart's Highest Town Academy. But good fighters. So there's been a lot of great guys out of this camp, out of the school. So. You know, um, what do you think overall MMA fighters nowadays, some of the UFC champions? Uh, some of them are very good. Uh, some are retired, or people like Randy Couture. Uh, to me, he's, in his time, he was the best at his weight. And, you know, I like people that are not only good, but they're nice people. And Randy Couture is one of the best. And a lot of them are real nice people. But none of them are pretty like me or you. Or as me. Nice guy, but don't piss him off. I've heard stories of you taking out guys that were trying to rob your car, trying to rob your dirt bikes. So even nowadays, I, I, I don't want to mess with you, Uncle Gene. I was wondering, how, how did it come about that you ref the Muhammad Ali versus Antonio Inoki match? And what was that like? Uh, there were 200 people that wanted to referee that because it was big, it was international, it was Taliban. I'm paid to be all over the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Ali first fought for my mother at the Olympic, after he was an amateur, and she uh, made him wear a button that says, I'm the greatest. He said, Mrs. Eaton, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't wear that. What would people say? She says, I don't care what they say if you sell balettos tickets. <laughs> and so he wore this and he ran to from the Olympic 18th and Grand to Third Street, which was the gym that everybody worked out with called Main Street Gym. And he got a lot of copy. Then he said he wanted to he wanted to go to the wrestling matches and see the uh, interviews from Freddie Blassie, he called him Gorgeous George, mm -hmm. but Freddie Blassie was not Gorgeous George. So Freddie says, I'll annihilate, mutilate, assassinate that lounge lizard. The lounge lizard, do you hear me? And Ali said, I want to be just like him. So he gets on television and says, my opponent's a bore, I'm going to knock him out and Four. And I says, Ollie, <laughs> I know you boxers, you lie a bit. Because he said he could knock him out in one. You got to go four rounds and then knock him out. <laughs> and of course, I, you know how I tease and everything. He went four rounds, guy never touched him. Fourth round, bam, he was out. And after that, he started predicting every fight and putting on these little shticks uh, and selling uh, tickets. Yeah. And uh, he says, I want Gene as the referee. 
and uh, so uh, she made five thousand, and Oki made two million, which was a lot of money, and uh, uh, Ali made uh, six million, which is still a lot of money. Now that it's been so many years, what do you? You know, I make even pro wrestling. You know, uh, when I talk about pro wrestling, it's hard acting. You you have to in acting you have to. Uh, go take summer stock, uh, you have to take dancing, singing, piano lessons, guitar lessons. Uh, I doubled a guy named James Whitmore for years and we had a series, he had a series which I doubled him in and we were making a lot of money. He says, well, I got to take off for six weeks. I said, take off for what? He says, I've got to uh, produces summer stock. And I says, well, what kind of money do you make? You know, he said he makes a hundred and a quarter a week. Mm -hmm. You know, and he works seven days a week. I says, seven days, I'll give you $200 to stick him down because I was making uh, two or three thousand a, a week, doubling him. And he said, I said, what are you going there for? And it's a good lesson. He says, I was sharpening my tools. You know, he did uh, a lot of shows, one man shows. Great actor. Um, you've mentioned Carl Gosh and Luthez. What about some of these, these old catch wrestlers? What do you think that differentiates kind of the catch style technically and attributes and their goals of grappling versus like nowadays, you know, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is so, so popular and common? What do you think the difference is of the kind of catch style, catch as catch kind of style doing things? Uh, they have much in common. Uh, the Brazilian style is copied after a lot of the old pro wrestlers, the legitimate shooters. And I love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and it's great and the participants are fantastic. But they say they know the Kimura. Well, I'm going to tell you, and you won't hear it anyplace else, where did the Kimura come from? There was a gentleman, all Japan judo champion, and he won all his matches. Then they kicked him out of Japan in 1955 uh, because he was a professional and taking money, and they wanted to keep him amateur. So he went down to Brazil and beat everybody with a double wrist lock, downward arm crank. And they couldn't pronounce double wrist lock or a downward arm crank, so they called it the Kimura. So now you know where the Kimura comes from. How about the guard? If you know what the guard is, where a man's between your legs. It was called foot and leg control, where you control the men's, uh, men or your opponent's uh, feet, knees, usually below the waist, but you can go into uh, triangles and everything. Uh, they have amablata, which is a chicken wing, and they're all pro wrestling holds, but they were not invented by you, me, or the Brazilians, or guys from the United States. They're all old pro wrestling holds, the legitimate shooters. Okay. There's not that many real hookers, real shooters left there nowadays. There's yourself. I mean, what do you think of some of the other guys? There's well, there's some good ones, but most of the good ones have died out because they're older. Luthez gave you a cauliflower ear uh, iron oh, wing award. Yeah, Luthez was, he could uh, shoot. Uh, I did a, a book uh, they sell. Uh, the last time he was on the mat with me, um, about six weeks before he passed away, and he was like 86, and he and his uh, wife, Charlie, a uh, great gal, and she's still around, he was unbelievable. And, uh, you know, you don't see him anymore. Uh, they just, they're non-existent. The, if you want to see good ones, you got to turn on the MMA. But uh, there's been a hammer lock by one guy. I mean, it's I think some of these holds, and even I'm sending some uh, my DVD to some of the UFC fighters. Some of these 
more rare old time holds, I think, you know, can start making a making a comeback. You know, even just the way of doing the double wrist lock and turning the wrist out. Oh yeah. Or if the guy is defending by holding his arm or his shorts. There's Carl Gotch uh, taught me the thing uh, where you break the guy's wrist, elbow, and shoulder doing a uh, downward arm crank or double wrist lock, which they call on television the Kimura. It doesn't matter what they call it as long as you can do it. And so hopefully all these MMA guys will start to learn before before kind of this, you know, some of these techniques get, get lost to antiquity. Hopefully, you know, some of these MMA fighters will pay attention to what's come before them and pick up a few things. There's some things out there that haven't really been used so much yet. Uh, one of my teachers is a great uh, hooker, not in the kind they had dresses. <laughs> uh, that's an old wrestling term, hooker or shooter. And uh, he showed me Egyptian walls. And these old professionals that got in, they were professional then, and they, they showed different, like, uh, different leg locks and neck locks. And as years go by, you see paintings of people doing holes and some that just didn't work. But uh, I, I love the finishing hole. A good wrestler, MMA fighter, if they can do it now. And hey, you not only have to learn wrestling, you gotta learn wrestling, grappling, Kempo, Shotokan, Taekwondo, boxing, Muay Thai. Uh, you got to learn all the martial arts. Not all of them work for you, but if one hold that you learn from anything like boxing, you might use it. So in our teaching here at Hyaston, which is gocard.com, uh, that's where I teach Monday nights, we teach a combination of everything. And that's why I love training here with you and Gopar. Mm -hmm. and, and all the fighters that are here. Well, you're a fighter, uh, but you also do movies. I never miss any of your movies. <laughs> you're a classic in your field and a legend in your own time. A legend in my own mind. But thank you, Uncle Gene. I got one last question for you. I hope you don't get upset by this one. If you don't want to answer, it's fine. But. Recently, Steven Seagal has been in the UFC news because of Anderson Silva and Yoda Machida, and uh, he was asked about it on an MMA show, the alleged incident with you choking him out. And he said about you, and I quote, he said, if he is saying that he's a path pathological scumbag liar. Now, I don't know if you want to address the incident at all, or maybe you're legally not allowed to talk about well, it, or if anything we'll happened. about this way. Steven Seagal, if brains were measured in Cadillacs, he'd be on roller skates. If... I mean, these were not nice words, and this was just about two Well, uh, the so guy that. lives in the land of Fantasia. He's a good uh, martial artist, but he insulted uh, a few guys that threw in the gauntlet, mm -hmm. and he claims he taught different people holds that are standard holds and uh, he, uh, he's, he's an interesting person. He's a good looking, he's tall, but he's teaching uh, Bones Jones or other guys these standard, front kick. Uh, standard holds that they've been doing all their life. Uh, but he gets publicity on it. But uh, Randy Couture, he challenged Randy Couture. Randy Couture says, if I come out of re uh, retirement, I want to fight just one person, Steven Seagal. And it's a, a shame uh, uh, he should take some kind of medicine because uh, he's got diarrhea of the mouth. <laughs> and uh, I say he's a great actor and a great martial artist. And after my incident with him, I spent a few months with lawyers and, uh, you know, he's, he's some, but you know, the whole thing is, if you get entertained watching a fellow like Steven Seagal, sit back and enjoy it. These early movies were good, but I'm glad, uh, I think you kind of 
said without saying what is is and he's known in the stunt community for hurting people and everyone loves you, you try to help me out, I'm nobody, you try to help everybody out and everyone knows that you're, you're a kind and giving man. And well you try to help people out, uh, I've been there, I've been damn lucky, I've been blessed, uh, I've made a lot of money in the stunt business, I've made money in the pro wrestling business and uh, as far as a fellow like Steven goes, uh, to put a person down, that doesn't make me a better man. You know, if, uh, if I have to brag, let somebody else say, hey, Gene was good in his time, you know, and, uh, but you people, you've got to know the difference between BS and legit. And uh, so you see somebody by Stephen uh, talking, yeah. I, 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 me, 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 and I, 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 and Rhonda, Rowdy Rhonda, Rousey, challenged him to a death match. <laughs> now Rhonda is the champion, uh, uh, woman, and Stephen's very good. But I would bet the farm, and I've got a farm, I bet the farm that he wouldn't last a round with her. She'd annihilate, mutilate, assassinate him. But that's just my opinion, and that's what makes gambling. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you, Jim, very much. You are the man. Time to go do some... Come on, let's get out of the man. Let's go twist some people. You got it. Um,